So you're looking for some edible butterfly host plants. Well, you're just in luck because what I'm going to be covering today are those win-win plants. The plants that help the caterpillars, that help the butterflies, but that you and me can eat. So today we're going to be covering eight different edible host plants for your butterfly garden. So when it comes to butterfly gardening and growing food, well, a lot of us don't have a ton of space. So having a plant that can do a double duty, a win-win, right? It's doing a two for one can be a really amazing thing. And that's why I think it's super important for people to learn about edible host plants because we don't all have a ton of space to have a butterfly garden over there and then a vegetable garden over there and then a food forest over here. It's just not going to happen. So having a plant that can do both things can be an amazing addition to your garden. Now, one of the things that I'm not going to be including or two or three of the things I'm not going to be including in this list, which I totally encourage you to share if you know some of these is medicinal plants, herbs and spices because that list will get really long, really fast. What I'm really focusing on are like kind of the fruits and vegetables, the bigger kind of items that you could eat. And I think a lot of people usually think of when they think of edible host plants. But if you know of a bunch of a medicinal, an herb or a spice that you would love to share that you think should have been on this list, please put it down in the comments below. And when it comes to having a win-win host plant, our number one choice has gotta be, well, hello, I'm in Florida. I'm gonna pick citrus. Citrus is the host plant for the giant swallowtail, which is the North American's largest butterfly. These gorgeous butterflies flit and they float and they're huge and they're beautiful and they're caterpillars. Well, they love citrus and they look like poop. Yeah, you heard me right. These little caterpillars look like bird poop or lizard poop. They're just not that cute. But you know what? They become gorgeous butterflies. And if you don't have a lot of space, but you're looking for a small medium tree that usually gets anywhere between 10 to 20 feet tall, citrus is a great choice. Here in my garden, I have an orange tree and I've got three different calamondins, plus I gave a calamondin to my neighbor. So my giant swallowtails have a lot of options when it comes to having a plant that I can eat and that they can eat. For our number two edible butterfly hose plant, well, it's gonna be passion fruit. Yep, this plant has a lot of different varieties, but really only one is the type that you can eat that you would get from like the grocery store. Now behind me, I've got my native Maypop passion vine, which has an edible fruit, but I wouldn't say it's really as yummy as the traditional passion fruit. So if you're gonna get this, make sure that you get the right type of passion vine to get your edible passion fruit. But what's great about this plant is, while I'm not focusing on medicinal qualities, this one is known for having a very relaxing tea that can be made from its leaves. And of course, it's got that big old flower that's just gorgeous. It also hosts five different butterflies across the United States. But the thing is, for my home state, it hosts two different butterflies, Gulf fritillaries and our state butterfly, the zebra longwing. So when it comes to picking a plant that is gonna give you a lot of wins, passion fruit's gonna be one of them. Now let me warn you, when it comes to this plant, it likes to spread. It sends runners really far out, like 10, 15 feet away. So be prepared to keep it under control and have to manage it regularly because it likes to spread. But that just means more passion fruit and more butterflies are coming your way. So for our number three edible host plant, well, let's talk about carrots. Carrots, dill, rue, and parsley are all the host plants to the black swallowtail. The black swallowtail, which is a large butterfly, and who doesn't love a swallowtail? I know, I think a lot of people, so that's like hashtag goals, is a great plant to introduce into your vegetable garden because these are gonna focus on, when it comes to carrots, your carrot greens. So you don't have to worry about the actual root that you're interested in getting attacked. It'll be there for you, but the greens, which generally most people don't use, will be used by the caterpillars. And what I like about this one versus like your passion vine, which has to have some structure or putting in like an orange tree, which is gonna take up some space. This is one of those plants that you don't have to have a lot of space and you can still have some really big, beautiful butterflies. Our number four edible host plant, well, it's native to the United States. It's described as being kind of like a banana but a banana that doesn't grow in the tropics and subtropics, and that is the pawpaw. Pawpaws are the host plant to our zebra swallowtail. This is another plant that's great because you're gonna get something that is a little bit unusual, but highly desirable, and get another swallowtail in your garden. When it comes to our next host plant, well, I'm gonna talk not about a host plant for a butterfly, but one for a large moth, the eloped sphinx moth. 
This is a gorgeous moth that's going to help with nighttime pollination and its host plant, the papaya. I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of this because actually I only found out about it because I saw the caterpillar and got some identification for it and found out that we actually had a lope caterpillar on this plant. But I think it's important because a lot of focus on butterflies is because of their ability to pollinate. But moths, they usually get a bad rap. People don't want them. But here in Florida, and I'm sure in a lot of other states, there are gorgeous moths. And really their focus is in helping us pollinate plants at nighttime. So while it's important to help those butterflies, moths are also an integral part of our wildlife. So make sure you support them with some of the host plants that we're gonna talk about today. Let's talk about host plant number six, and let's have a real talk about this. A lot of times I see people who do gardening and vegetable gardening who do amazing jobs, and then they start talking about the cabbage moth. So a lot of what I see though is not a cabbage moth, but a cabbage butterfly, or a white checkered butterfly, or the great southern white butterfly. A lot of white butterflies here in the United States host on brassicas. So that's gonna be your cabbages, your broccolis, your cauliflowers and they can create a lot of aesthetic problems. Now here, my broccoli has been mostly eaten down and killed at this point, but that's really not the butterfly's fault. That is because we're past season for broccoli. They shouldn't be alive right now. And the caterpillars are doing their job of eating the leaves so that they can go become butterflies or food for other animals. So for me to come and try to treat this with a pesticide to get rid of them is really the wrong thing because a healthy plant with its host butterfly actually should be able to keep up. It might get eaten down and not look really pretty for a minute, but it'll bounce back as long as it's healthy. If it's not healthy, it's already on its way out. All the caterpillars are doing is accelerating it. So when we do things by adding pesticides to go and get rid of them, what we're really doing is breaking the food chain because those caterpillars are an integral part of our food system and our food for birds. They need a lot of soft body insects, specifically caterpillars to go feed their little chickadees so that we can have all the beautiful birds that we enjoy in our gardens. So encourage you that in the right season for your area, put in brassicas and be okay with the fact that you're gonna get some holes in the leaves. If it's still in the right season, your plant will be just fine. You'll just some have some holy leaves for a little bit, but you'll find that your broccoli heads and your cauliflower heads don't get any damage from them. They're not interested in that. Just like with a lot of these other plants, they're not eating the fruit, they're just focused on the leaves. Number seven for host plants, well, it's another classic of the garden. It's gonna be beans. Beans are the host plant to the long-tailed skipper butterfly. These are really cute little skippers, and I have a lot of hard times getting them on camera because they are fast. They are fast, fast, fast little guys. And the long-tailed skipper, besides having a long tail, which is super cute, it also has a really pretty bluish purple color. So highly desirable, definitely recommend it. And it's worth giving up some of the leaves so that you can have these cute little guys running around your garden. And I think this is a really good example because we're kind of heading out of the bean season. So where you saw that the broccoli was on the big time struggle bus, the beans, we still have a lot of leaves going. We're coming towards the end, but because this is a healthy plant and it's not completely stressed out, they've gotten a bunch of the leaves, but we're already growing new leaves in and they're doing fine. So I think this is a good example of showing when the plant's in the right time of year, it'll be fine. It can lose some leaves. And our next one, it'll show it even better. So let's go look at number eight. So let's talk about our number eight plant. Well, it's gonna be all the plants in the nightshade family. So eggplants, peppers, and of course, everybody's favorite, the tomato. I know, are you scandalized? Are you shocked? What is it going to be? Well, you have things like sphinx moths and hawk moths that actually use these. These are again, beautiful, gorgeous moths, but they're caterpillars instead of like how we call a monarch butterfly and a monarch caterpillar, we usually call these the tomato greenhorn worms. Yup, you got me, worms. Why are we calling them worms? It's just because again, we don't like what they're doing and that's eating a bunch of leaves off of our plants. And so we go and we grab that pesticide to get rid of it. Stop it. Because here's a perfect example. While you saw my broccoli, which was super stressed out, not happy right now because we're in the middle of summer in Florida. You saw my beans that were kind of heading out of season, weren't happy. We are in great season for tomatoes and look at it. Tons of leaves, lots of fruit. This thing is happy as can be. And there are some leaves that are getting eaten off of it by various caterpillars and that's okay because a healthy plant should totally be able to keep up. It will be fine. If it's in the right season, right climate, it's got what it needs, it will do just fine. And the caterpillar is an integral part, right? 
So you can have tomato plants and get some of these gorgeous moths that are going to help pollinate things at nighttime. Now you may be wondering, how are you keeping it under control? Do you pick off some of the caterpillars? Because I'm sure you've seen it if you have milkweed in your garden, those little caterpillars can totally overtake a plant till it's a stick and it'll take a minute to get bounced back. But when you do things in kind of that permaculture mindset, integrating a lot of different plants, one, you'll notice I've got a lot of plants mixed together and things like where the beans and the tomatoes are intertwined, they tend to be healthier because we're not all getting a bunch of hornworms or a bunch of long tail skippers eating them all at once. The other thing is, is that because of the way we're doing things and because we've been doing them for a while, because sometimes the first time you do it, it's not going to work out as well is that we've got a good bird population here. I've been creating spaces throughout the garden so that they have places to hide, they have places to perch, and they hang out in this vegetable garden all the time because they know this is a place where that they can get food for themselves and they can get food for their babies. So in order to make sure that you have a really well integrated permaculture, polyculture garden, different plants, different purposes, and help support the whole group of wildlife and wildlife will help you in your butterfly garden or vegetable garden or food forest or your potpourri garden that's just filled with lots of great fun things. And when it comes to butterfly gardening, if you want to learn more about butterfly gardening, go ahead and learn about the four mistakes that you should avoid as a new butterfly gardener. Or maybe you want to get a lot more monarchs, check out this video. And if you want to go and help support this channel and drive the mission of helping people find the joy of gardening with native and edible plants while they help wildlife and do all the great things, go ahead and click the join button down below. You'll learn about the different things that you can get by being part of the Wild Floridian membership. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.